All right. Welcome to another Harmonious at Lunch. We got an awesome episode planned for today. A little irony is present. We're going to talk about podcasting, podcast strategy. We're going to tie all that into your business strategy as well. And we have a phenomenal guest. But before we dive in real quick, just want to dive into what we're talking about here at What If recently. And I'll put this on the screen, whatif.com slash navigate. We're talking about strategic planning too for your business. What are you going to do next year? Do you have a plan going into the new year? How are you going to grow your business for the next 12 months? Is it a hope and a dream or is it a plan? So go check out whatif.com slash navigate and we'll get you that plan set up so that you have concrete, factual steps to dive into starting January 1st. I'm super excited about that. Uh, but we have a very cool guest. I want to welcome. She put her name pronunciation on the screen <laughs> just for me. But welcome, Aeliana, to the show. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. So I, I tease that a little bit. We're going to be talking about podcast, podcast strategy. Uh, give me a little bit of your background. Um, so in a nutshell, I live in Tampa. Um, I am a hockey mom, a wife. Uh, I work full time. I was a paralegal for over 20 years. And now I do podcast strategy. I help out uh, podcasters go from what my friends have called frazzled podcast to a dazzling one. Frazzled to dazzled. I love that. I love the experience of what got you here. So, um, you know, when you start working with a podcaster, when do they typically contact you? So it runs the gamut. So most of the time I get a lot of people who are just starting and don't know where to start. Um, and about, you know, maybe 30, 40% of others are already in their podcast and they're in that moment where, um, they get the burnout, they get the pod fade where they're like, I've run out of things to say, or I'm tired of recording because nobody's really listening because they don't really know how to check their analytics and things like that. And so that's usually where I get them is where either they're starting and they want to start in a good position, like you were saying, planning for their next, you know, what, what, what's going to happen, or they're in the middle of it and they're tired and they're burnt out and they're trying to figure out if they need to continue or quit altogether. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you, but that sounds a lot like business as a whole. Absolutely. I, I think a Absolutely. lot of people get into it, whether it's a side hustle or they go all in on a business mm -hmm. and they just start, but there's no real foresight to say, where am I going with this? First of all, right. and how am I going to accomplish my goals if I even have goals? Right. So when you start working with someone, whether they have a podcast, they're a couple episodes in, or maybe they're just thinking about it. Mm -hmm. What is like the first set of steps you would go through in order to figure out like where they are now and where they want to go? So first step, regardless of what, where they are, because this is usually the biggest problem is we sit down and we figure out why they want to do the podcast and we figure out what their goals are and what their definition of success is. Because the definition of success is, com is, is like completely different for everyone. Um, the same thing is if you get into a business, your definition of success could be making a thousand dollars a month. Someone else's definition of success would need to be ten thousand, hundred thousand. You need to find out what your definition is so that you know whether or not you're hitting those marks to get there. So those are the most important things um, that I help that I go through with my clients when we start working together. Yeah. So let's say I came to you, we've known each other for a whole seven minutes now. And, <laughs> and I say, all right, my goal, the reason I started this podcast is because I want to be the next Joe Rogan. And that's my definition of success. Are you going to slap me or what, would you walk me through what that looks like? So probably what I would do is I would say we need to backtrack. <laughs> so we need to start in smaller steps. That's a nice because, way to put it. <laughs> Right. Because Joe Rogan probably isn't in the same boat as you are. So you're probably doing this thing solo, whereas he probably has the bankroll to have a team of people doing their marketing, doing his promotions, doing his editing, whereas you're probably doing all of these things by yourself. So we probably, that could be like a huge goal to get to but I would probably have you backtrack it and do a little bit more 
I don't want to say realistic because I wouldn't want to burst your bubble because everyone can dream, but probably backtrack and do something that's a little bit more feasible where you are right now versus looking at that big picture. Because you, you got to think he could have started where you were, but you're right now at the starting line and he's at the finish line of a 5K and you're just starting. So you can't compare his finish to your start. Cause you're not, that's, you're not going to get there. You're eventually you could, but not right away. So that's where I would start. Yeah. And I think that's what burns a lot of people out too, is exactly. because they look at whatever that finish line is for them, the example of their success. Mm -hmm. And they say, I'll be there in three months, six months. They put a time limit on it. And then when mm -hmm. it doesn't come or they're not even close, that's when they give up. Right. And it's, right. it's such a shame, but it happens obviously in podcasting. It happens in business every single day. Um, I've heard some numbers, but I'm, I'm curious if you have the stats on it. Do you know the average um, number of podcasts people record before they give up? So usually the last time I looked, I think it was uh, 2021 was the last time I looked mm -hmm. at it. And it's about nine to 10 episodes. So um, usually about the millions of podcasts that go out all the time only about a third of those actually make it past episode 10. Wow. For that same reason. So you, you tend to, like you were saying, you tend to look at things where you're at and you're comparing yourself to someone else that's already finished. And like my coach is always telling us, she's like, as humans, we are terrible at figuring out time. We always think that things are going to take us less time than they actually are. And so if you don't make it in, let's say you give yourself yourself six months to do something and you don't make it in six months. Well, okay. It just, it's going to take you longer. Doesn't mean that you don't have, that you can't do it because you didn't do it in those six months. It's just maybe going to take you another six months or another six months. We just don't know how to gauge time. We're, we're people. Yeah. I think as human beings, yes. <laughs> and I think entrepreneurs <laughs> take that to another level. Because we think we're going to do things in like a tenth of the time that they right. should actually take. And right. that's what our calendars look like. And that's what our projects look like. Mm -hmm. And then we get disappointed when they don't happen. Um, yeah, I, I heard, I asked you that question because I heard I, Alex Ramosi say, if you record 21 episodes, I think you have a top 1% podcast because most quit before then. Yeah. So with, with my clients, one of the things I do when we're goal setting and we're figuring out how to, how to get everything in place when they're starting to launch theirs is I have them come up with 52 ideas hmm. for podcast topics that they could talk about with no problem. And that way, if they get stuck, they have that list of 52 things that they can always go back to when you at least have 52 episodes. If you end up with more, great, you know, but you at least have those 52. And then another thing that I like to do is make sure people know how many episodes are you going to get out? How often are you going to publish your episodes? Are you going to do once a week, twice a week, every day, once a month? That'll also help figure, help you figure out how am I going to get this done? What do I need? So I work backwards, mm -hmm. what you're going to publish and then work backwards from there. What is that? How much time does that mean if I'm going to do once a week? How long do I need to record? How many episodes do I need to have in the bank so that I am doing one a week? You know, things like that. Yeah, this is so great. So if you're thinking about launching a podcast where you have one and you want to optimize it, um, go to this website on the screen, topshelfvirtualservices.com. Um, and, and figure out, you know, what, what is your next step? Where are you going with this? If you're lost, you want to quit. I don't want to see you quit. I don't want to see business owners quit. I don't want to see podcasters quit. It is so important to see things through. I talk about that all the time. Patience and persistence will serve you so well in business and in life. Um, Absolutely. And here's a great resource for that. So, all right, we talked about step one. We may have gotten to step two. Um, what, then what do you do with your clients? Once we have, we have the vision established mm -hmm. and, and we say, okay, record your, or at least get your 52 ideas down. Mm -hmm. What does it look like from there? So from there, um, I provide some clients with every three months, we do a strategy call. Um, and then that way we can look back at what they've recorded for those three months. So basically every quarter we look through and see what it, what what's working, what's not working. I show them what their analytics looks like, how to look at their analytics. Um, 
And then I also have um, for clients, if they want it, uh, monthly Voxer support, which is where they message me throughout the month. If they get, they're stuck on something, if they have a question, um, we work through those. And um, yeah, that's, that's basically it. You know, they're, they're kind of running it on their own, which is usually what podcasters like. And then, um, you know, I mean, there's some that want me to do the management of their podcast and I do that too. But for the most part, it's just the strategy calls and checking in every three months and seeing, you know, where we need to tweak, what we need to change and what needs to stay the same. Yeah, that's awesome. So I'm curious then, from all the, the clients you've worked with, is there is there a type of person or a type of business that you see have really good success with podcasting? Or is it kind of, um, you know, just with the right plan, anybody can succeed? Um, I think it's with the right plan. And if it's something that you're passionate about, mm-hmm. um, you certainly don't want to get into podcasting just to make money. Um, you need to make sure that you are I know this word get thro- gets thrown around a lot and it's authenticity. You know, you need to make sure that you're yourself because people can see that. People can sense that. They know when you're coming on just to sell them something and you're not being true to who you are. And so the more passionate you are about your subject, whatever the subject, I mean, there's literally millions of podcast topics out there. There's an audience for everyone. Um, so as long as you're being authentic, you're passionate you have a plan in place, you have the right strategies in place. I think anybody can be, you know, successful in podcasting. That's amazing. Now, let me, let's tie this real quick to the harmonious business architecture. And then we're going to come back with one last couple last questions for Eliana. But um, there's one thing that's present to me in this conversation, and that is the navigation discipline. I threw it on the screen before. That's what we're working on, but that's what most businesses lack. And it's because we've modeled the fortune 500 and the fortune 100 and these big giant companies, when they talk about strategic planning and we have pretty mission statements and pretty vision statements, and they don't inspire us or our teams and they're just words on the wall. Well, if you don't have your vision mapped out for, for whatever it is, in this case, we're talking about a podcast, but also for your company, if you don't have that five-year vision and three-year vision and one-year vision, your employees don't know what they're chasing. And a lot of times when the going gets tough, you forget too. Mm-hmm. If you don't have the navigation discipline solidly established in your business, you will run out of gas to run your business. It's just, I've seen it over and over with our clients. I've seen it with friends of mine who have started businesses. Eliana, I'm sure you've seen it a number of times and you've obviously seen it with podcasters. Um, so it's not, it's not like we're making this stuff up here. Um, so please reach out, go to the website on the screen, top shelf, virtual services.com. Um, now this may be a, a little bit of a surprise question. We didn't talk about this before the episode, but I'm, I'm curious, do you have, whether it's a, a YouTube channel or a PDF or something? Do you have like a free download or, or information where people can get started in podcasting? Yeah, I can actually send that over to you if you want. Um, I have a, a free launch your podcast in eight weeks um, that I can send over to you. And then in there, it's got um, a bunch of links to like picking the right platform uh, for you, um, how to pick the equipment um, and some suggestions for equipment. Um, how to put together your vision statement specific to you, not in a grand scheme of things, because I've never been very good at those big grand scheme of things, but specific to you um, and things like that. And then I also have a, for November and December, um, a free 45 minute strategy call that I'm offering. So if you're starting, if you're having, you know, if you've gotten into your podcast, if it's something for 2024, I've got that, that I'm offering a free um, 45 minute strategy call to anyone who wants to take part in that. So I'll send that over to you. Yeah. I should have checked that out. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I will include that in the show notes if you're watching the replay here um, and I'll check it out myself. So I'll give my feedback in the description, but um, no, I'm, I'm super excited about that. And the, the free call, the free strategy call, that is so cool that you're offering that. So thank you for that. Yeah. Um, now, one one last question here um, before we kind of wrap up. And what do you see as the potential impact on a business from running a podcast? I'm, I'm asking a little bit selfishly, but also for people who are maybe, you know, we're, we're business owners, we're maxed out. 
Do I start the podcast? Do I not? What, what sort of impact do you see for your clients? So I know for my experience and my clients' experiences, having a podcast is one of those things where you are able to reach more people than you could have without one um, because of the, again, the type of reach that you get. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great way to sell your services, sell your products, introduce them. You know, you can use your audience as beta testers. If you have a question and don't know, you know, like for course creators, if you don't know where your next course is coming from, you can pull your audience. You can ask your audience, you know, what type of things are you struggling with? What do you think um, I should do, you know, coming up? Here's some ideas that I've got and use them as kind of like your marketing mastermind. Mm -hmm. um, you know, audiences are a great treasure trove of information if you know how to tap into them properly and you include them into your episodes. You could even, it could even give you ideas for new episode topics. You know, you could have a Q&A, you know, in there at the end of your podcast and say, hey, if you have any questions or you want me to talk about something, put it in the chat, you know, put it in the review, put it in the notes, and I'll be sure to answer it you know, answer all your questions in a following episode. And there you have an episode without really needing to think about anything. So that's, that's where I see a lot of podcasters going is just their, their reach is magnified, you know, 10, 20 fold just by having a podcast. Yeah, that's great advice. And if you're listening, do all of those things, comment <laughs> down below, we'll answer them. That's you know. great advice. Um, and lastly, of course, I know we have your website on the screen. Where can we follow you on social media to see what you're up to and to continue learning? Sure. So on Instagram, I am aoliana.elliot, two L's, two T's. Uh, and then on TikTok, I am aoliana underscore pod underscore strategy. Awesome. I will put those in the show notes as well. Okay. Aoliana, thank you so much for coming. This was an awesome episode and a little bit meta about starting a podcast <laughs> on a podcast. I love it. I love all of this. Um, no, but so if you enjoyed this episode and you are thinking about starting a podcast, please go visit our website, reach out you 45 minute free strategy consultation and, and the PDF of course, that will include tips to start your podcast. Um, like I said, navigation was present. If you don't have a vision and a strategy that's right for you, Aliana, thank you for saying that better than I said it, but we always say it's got to be according to you, not somebody else's plan. That is what is most important for your business and obviously for your podcast here. So if you want to create that navigation, if you want to go into next year stronger than ever and have a plan for growth so that you don't have to pull your hair out, that's what we want you to do. It's on the screen, whatif.com slash navigate. I'm super excited to see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. This has been fantastic. And we're signing off, Aliana. Thank you again. Bye. Thanks, Brandon.